the weekend? How is it, has, has it met the expectations? I know when we talked last week, you said you had pretty high expectations of what the weekend was going to be like for you. Well, it exceeded, ex exceeded the, all the expectations that I had. I mean, it's to come back to this environment with all the love that um, I've received from top to bottom is far greater than what I ever imagined that it could be. Because I've never been a part of anything like this. And it's, it's and I'm glad the young guys came uh, to, to watch, to see, that when, when you pay the price and you do things the right way, and you take care of yourself, your body, your mind, and stay true to yourself, that good things can happen to for you and to you. And I and I appreciate that. I thank God for all that He has done for me and the, the mind that set that He gave me, the the focus, and I give all the credit and praise to Him. What what led you here? I mean, was it the greatness of an Austin Carr or a Callis Jones or um, why Notre Dame? And you were you weren't recruited by Digger, correct? No, he did. He, he did. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. It was the greatness of Digger. <laughs> <laughs> At least in his mind. <laughs> no, you know, my my mom and my dad, who who have long uh, been deceased, but they. I didn't start playing basketball until my sophomore year in high school. Never played before. My dad was a Pentecostal minister. And growing up in a really bad, tough area in Newark and in Elizabeth, New Jersey, with drug, uh, was, drugs was really bad and crime. And also my mom and dad kept my sisters and I on a very tight uh, leash. And we, when, my, when they were at work, we had to stay in the house during the summer all day. Had no air conditioning or, or, or such. And so it was tough, it was hard. But through all that, we developed a certain discipline, and so we were very, we were very much sheltered, my sisters and I. And then I started, my, um, I was the, the high school coach, because I grew really tall over, overnight, and the high school, my high, the high school coach saw me and he says, "Hey, you know, I, you should, you could be on my basketball team," and I said, "Really?" He said, "Yeah, I can help you to become an outstanding player because you have great agility," and I, he watched me in gym in the gym class. So I ran home and I said to my dad, I said, the, the guy want me to try out for the basketball team. He says, nah, he says, too much drugs and crime out there. He says, we want you home and then you go into church. That's all that. And so it really hurt. And I, I, I went outside and I, was, I sat down on the stoop and I, I was crying. And my cousin, he was the first black eye, nose and ear surgeon in the state of New Jersey. And he came by and he asked me, he says, what's, what's wrong? And I said, my dad won't let me play basketball. And he said, why not? And I said, he said, because you don't want me getting, up, getting involved in drugs and all. And so he went and he spoke with my dad and he said, you have to let, trust him and let him go out and, and find his own way. And so they talked, my father came in and he said, hey, you know what, you go ahead and play and just stay out of trouble. And I said, okay, dad. From there, it was all she wrote. I, I played, I loved it. I practiced and practiced and played. I was in the gym all the time. And, and I was very fortunate because I had a guy that, um, he was, he, he was a, a high school guy that dropped out of high school, but he was really talented. And he taught me, he says, it's very important for you to use both hands, left hand and right hand. Because if you only use one, then they can kind of defend you and, and force you into your weaker side. So we did that, and just did it religiously. And I became very good with both hands. I, you, you couldn't tell if I was right hand or left hand. So, so I'm very blessed. I happened upon the right people. I stayed out of trouble because of the pressure and the guidance of my mother and my father. Uh, my oldest sister, my niece over there, her mother, uh, my sister Barbara, she was in charge of us, my sisters and I, and when my mom and dad were at work and she kept us in the house during the summer times and we could not go out, we had to stay in. It was hot, we had no air conditioning. So we were, so we, it was a, so that helped me with a discipline and it kept me out of trouble as I grew and became older where then I didn't need all that because I knew myself what was important for me and I stayed focused with that. I'm, I'm a little bit younger than you, but I remember you, the term that would be used today is you had a great motor. 
um, what what led you to play with that level of, I guess you said the love of the game, but I mean the level of aggressiveness with which you played? First of all, I think it, some of it, most of it is instinctive. I think it's hard to teach somebody to have a motor. It's, it's hard to teach somebody to be, a, to, I, I don't like using the, the word aggressive. I just like to, uh, to assert themselves because we don't want to hurt somebody. But I, growing up in those, in the, in the, the, those playgrounds back home, you had to, if you didn't play hard and play well and do what, what to help win, you didn't, because there would be 50 guys waiting to play. And if you couldn't play, ah, no, no, not you, give me this guy. So you had to worry. So that, that pressure alone helped me and, and as well as other guys to become uh, highly competitive. It was about survival and being able to stay out there and play. Well, what do you remember about the most famous rebound in Notre Dame history? <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the game that, that, that day, that the UCLA moment yesterday. <laughs> you know, um, the game, that, that game obviously was, it was huge. I, uh, I remember calling my dad the night before because I couldn't sleep. And I called my dad and he said, what's wrong? And it was, I don't know, four or five o'clock in the morning. I said, dad, this game, you know, if I don't play well, you know, we're not going to be able to win it. And he said, well, are you saying that you're taking credit for the win? I said no, but we all had to contribute. But I had, but my load is probably a little heavier, and so he says, "Well, let's pray." And so my dad prayed for me over the phone, and you know what? When I when he when he was finished, I felt like I could go and compete against the world, and and um, and when I when we went, I went to the uh, to the gym, and Dwight Clay and my so my teammates, uh, I, we, it's so stupid, but I said. Hey y'all, I had a dream last night. <laughs> and, and they say, yeah, brother, shoot, what kind of dream was it? I said, I had a dream about a, a uh, Bruin. And they said, what happened with the Bruin? I said, the Bruin came and he didn't like the leprechaun. A leprechaun worked magic on him and kicked his butt. <laughs> oh, well, shout out, yeah, yeah. we just say butt, okay? And, and so, and so, and, and so Dwight Clay was the funny, he and Gary Brokaw, so they was like, yeah, brother, so what else, what else happened? I said, I, we stopped him. We did. And he said, well, what happened to Walt? I said, Walt was of no factor. <laughs> and so, so we said, hey, man, hey, man. And so we said, all right, let's get in there. Go kick the Bruin and Walton's butt. And so we had our hands in it. So we, we went out and we were, oh, we were geeked up. We were on high, high motor. We went out there and we were in the warm-up lines. And we came to play. I mean, our guys, Gary Brokaw, Dwight Clay, Adrian Danley, all, we were... They were so psyched and ready to go. When we went out there and, and we performed, there was no fear, absolutely no fear. And uh, so the, ne the next day, my dad, he called me and he says, so the game went well, huh? And I said, yes, sir. And he says, wow, that was really awesome. He said, did you give God credit? And I said, absolutely, dad. And that, that's all he wanted to know, that he said, where, <laughs> where does the credit go? So I've lived my life like that. I, I'm always excited to give thanks to where it belongs. And um, and that's that. Right, so what's the next one? <laughs> John, if I can ask two questions. One, the student athlete that comes to Notre Dame, they say it's a 40-year commitment. How has the Notre Dame brand behind you and that foundation helped you in your personal life and your professional career? Well, and then the second one, you've had a chance to go back and watch that 74 game. What was it like to watch it, not as a player, but as a viewer? Oh, I smile. It's a, it brings a smile because I mean, you know, it it takes you back into um, the past to 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 be involved with one of the great memories that you have, and and so when I when I can see it on fa on tape, <clears throat> I uh, I'm still very proud of it and of, of our guys, of our team, the fact that we could go out and and pull off something that was so vital and important for I think college basketball. Because the Bruins, were, they were beating everybody. Nobody could compete with them. And they were, they were great. And so on that day, we were the best team. I wonder if I could ask you about the, the medical situation that you had while you were in school here and just the recovery process and, and what that time was like for you and what the Notre Dame family was like for you during that time. That was, hey, it, was, it, was, it was tough. It was tough because I, 
I work so hard to uh, be a good citizen, to always be a hard worker. Basketball, I love basketball. And now all of a sudden the doctor says that you may never play basketball again. And, and it was de a devastating um, reality, p potential reality to me. And so I didn't know what I was going to do. And, and then one day, uh, one, night, one night when I was laying in the bed feeling sorry for myself, and I got a phone call, and it was my dad. And uh, my dad is a is, You good? Yeah. My dad is gone, uh, but when he's at, let's pray, and we pray. And uh, and I went out and had a heck of a basketball game. There was no fear. Um, there was absolutely no fear. I had no doubt that we were going to win the basketball game. And that's an honest, goodness, truth. Uh, and, I, and obviously, it wasn't just me. My teammate, Gary Brokaw, Dwight Clay, Ray Martin, and, and a host of other guys. We all, and, and, and I have to say to Dick, Coach Phelps, he did a wonderful job of preparing us. Obviously, he wants you to think he prepared us and he played the game himself. <laughs> As coach. So, so again, thank God. It was an awesome game. It has followed me the rest of my life. And, and I would say it couldn't have happened to a better person. <laughs> <All right. laughs> thank you.